there is great variation which separates the skull of a domestic cat from that of a tiger. In this animation, a comparable degree of variation is applied to the skull of a chimpanzee, and the resultant skull is quite different. If the variation which separates the skull of a black bear and the skull of a cave bear could be applied to that of a chimpanzee, the resultant skull would be very different from that of a chimp. Arguably, this skull would be far more different from that of the original chimp than a human skull is different from the chimp. Significant variation in the skulls of modern dogs has occurred in modern breeds compared to the skulls of ancestral wolves. If one were to take a chimpanzee skull and apply the same types of variations which have converted the skulls of wolves into chihuahuas with their rounded craniums, uh, Great Danes with their enlarged size, or the English and French terriers with their uh, modified snouts, one could argue whether this amount of change uh, is greater than that which would be required to change a skull of something like a chimp into skulls which would be classified as hominids in the genus Homo. If the level of variation which separates a vervet monkey from a baboon would be applied to a chimpanzee's skull, the resultant skull would be extremely different and would be more different from the chimp skull than a human skull would be from a chimp skull. If the degree of variation between the skull of a ring-tailed lemur and a mouse lemur could be applied to a chimpanzee skull, the resultant skull would be very different from that of the original chimp. In fact, with its enlarged brain case, it might be interesting to wonder whether such a skull might even be classified in the genus Homo.